Good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Life. It is good to see you in the house of God this morning. We just want to take a minute and welcome every guest. It is so good to see you. We have planned and prepared for you to be here, and we are going to just worship God and give it all we've got this morning. Are you excited? Amen. Amen. All right. Would you stand? And even if you're watching online, we welcome you. You can stand in your house, too. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne this morning. Lord, not in our own righteousness, but in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have saved us and set us free, that you have made us new creations in Christ Jesus, and you have broken every chain, every bondage, every bit of condemnation so that we can lift our hands and worship you and praise your name this morning. Lord, I thank you for the heat. I thank you for the warmth of your presence in this place. Lord, I just feel a unity in this house this morning. And we thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We pray that you would be blessed today by our worship. Lord, I believe that you are going to do mighty miracles in this place that as we Praise your name that you're going to draw close to us because we're trying to draw close to you. We just bless you and honor you today, Jesus. It's all about you. And we thank you for that. We give you honor in this house in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen.
again. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my fighting your battles. I just want to encourage you that if you are fighting a battle right now, it's worth it because that line right there, 
my victories in Jesus' name. You may feel like the fighting is for nothing, but your victory is coming. You can claim that you have a victory in Jesus' name because he already has that victory waiting for you. So if you have that battle with you here today, I just pray over you that victory. I pray that you can claim that in Jesus' name. You need to declare it. My victory is in Jesus' name. On this Sunday, on this hour, my victory, I claim it. I march into that battlefield knowing I have victory. raise your hands this morning. <clears throat> Lord, we just declare right now our victory is in Jesus' name. <laughs> Would you just say that with me? My victory is in Jesus' name. My victory is in, victory is in Jesus, Jesus' name. God, we just declare every battle is worth it. God, we thank you for sustaining us along the way. God, we thank you that Sometimes when all we see is the enemy, we know that they are surrounded. Lord, spiritually, I just pray, just like the prophet prayed, Lord, open his eyes and let him see the armies that surround us that fight for us. God, we just declare victory through the power of Jesus' name this morning. Lord, over every healing we need, every financial breakthrough we need. Lord, over depression. We just declare victory in Jesus' name this morning. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to continue our worship. You may be seated in the house. I'm going to invite the ushers forward. Let's just stay in this power, right? The presence of God. We can stay right there. We're going to continue our worship through our giving. The quickest way to receive a harvest? To plant some seed, right? We can't harvest something unless we plant a seed. So if you have your offering, you can hold it up, and we're just going to pray over it right now. God, we thank you for this opportunity.
to give. Lord, we know that we will harvest the same seed that we plant. So, Lord, with hope in our hearts, with clarity in our vision, and with victory, we plant this seed, our offering, and our tithes. And we just declare that you are going to bring forth a harvest of righteousness, a breakthrough. In Jesus' name this morning. Lord, so we sow our seed in faith because you are faithful to us. And Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to give in Jesus' name. Amen. So they're going to pass amongst you. They'll pass the bucket by. There's the joy box in back as well. And if you're online, we have PayPal. There's the Tithely app. We're a spirit of life, Fond du Lac there. And we're going to sing another song. So as they pass by you, please stand up and worship with us. Amen. Uh -huh.
Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Our Heavenly Father is faithful. Amen. I invite you to be seated. And this Sunday is our third Sunday. And it's the third Sunday of 2022. And what that means is that we receive another offering. And as the ushers come, I will express to you what this offering is about. It's about missionary work. It's what we give, and we give to missions, and we give outside of our community, and we give to our community, and we find that through what we do together, we can bless many. Amen? Yeah. And um, I'm thankful for that. Last year, um, by year giving into missions, uh, specifically into water wells, we gave 7700 and some odd dollars to put in a water well that is going to be done in a place that we have ministered before in missions down in the Dominican Republic. Last year at Thanksgiving, we raised over... 1,272 pounds, I believe is what it was, that we gave to the food pantry because of your hearts in giving. So this morning, know that we support Youth for Christ in our local area. We support uh, Everyday Ministries, which is in Dominican Republic. And uh, this year... Uh, when I get everything worked out, we're going to start a, another project where we're going to be giving into Europe's Hope. Uh, it's a children's ministry. And over there, literally $5 of American money can feed a child for three weeks. Just $5. So when we give, we, we give unto the Lord that we are a part of ministry. You know, I, this morning we're talking about the first pillar of a powerful church, and it's about stewardship. If we would find that we give sacrificially into people's lives, that God will bless who we are and will move and touch lives that will be so desperately in need. Amen? So, Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for every heart here that has a heart to give unto you. God, that we give that the kingdom may be known, that ministry may go forth. Just find us faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. As they pass amongst you, I have a few announcements. This coming Friday night, January the 21st, all the single ladies from the ages of 16 years and up, there's a new time that we're going to have. It's an evening of fun and fellowship. 
You need to see Mary Bowman, which is sitting here in the front that was on the piano this morning during worship, or Billy Joe. If you have any questions, those are the two women that you need to confer with. Next Sunday, we are ending our time of fasting. Uh, I, I'm not going to ask you how many have stayed true to your fast, uh, but I pray that you've been faithful in your prayer time. Amen. But next Sunday, the men's ministry will be having soup luncheon as a fundraiser for their ministry. It's after the morning service downstairs in the fellowship hall. You can eat in or you can take out. And these are the soups that they're going to have for you. Homemade chicken noodle. Ooh, somebody will. Ooh. Homemade chicken and dumpling. And broccoli slash cauliflower and cheese soup. And in my announcements, it says, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's dine-in or take-out, and it's for the men's ministry. Speaking of the men's ministry, on Saturday, February 5th, we will be having no regrets. It's hosted down at Lighthouse. And I encourage all of the men in here to see Michael. Uh, Mike, you can stand up. See Michael. He has tickets to sell. And it is, it's a morning session uh, with lunch provided. And there's going to be some great speakers. And, and then there's me. Uh, I, I'll be speaking in one of the sessions uh, myself. Uh, please don't. I don't know who's playing. <laughs> And I'm going to be speaking on the intentional pursuit of God in our life as men. How we must become intentional. Uh, it's about growing. You know, I, I don't want to be the same as I was when I was younger. Oh, there are some days I wish I had the agility of when I was younger and the flexibility of when I was younger. Can I get an amen from everybody over 50? I'll get you in her. But the thing is, um, we have to become intentional about being good fathers. Just simply good men, godly men. And so I encourage you to come and be a part of it. And the last announcement is, how many would want a big screen TV? Put your hand up, wave it around like you're just crazy. Well, we got one downstairs that you can have. You just have to haul it. And it's a big one. And the last time that it was used, it worked. <laughs> but it's a projection TV downstairs, so if you, you, know, you want to set up a man cave where your wife will let you, uh, out in the garage or the shed that you built last year for your mower, uh, wherever you, maybe put it in the kids' room where they can have up-close, personal interaction with their <laughs> video cane. It's downstairs, it's about 39 and a half inches by 54, I think the 39 is how wide it is, I'm not for sure, it's 54 inches tall and probably that wide, uh, but if you're interested in it, see Billy Joe, and if you're a guest here this morning, there's a green card in front of you, we would love for you to fill that out, and uh, that is just simply where we can bug you a lot, no, that is not why, <laughs> I'm just seeing if you're listening. It's about us just being able to connect with you. There's a lot of great things going on here at Spirit of Life and, and more things coming. And we just want to keep you informed. Amen. So this morning, I start with a message about six pillars of a powerful church. Six pillars of a powerful church. And, and it's a series, it'll be six weeks and it'll... It'll be based upon things that make us as a church, as well as individuals, more powerful in the kingdom of God for the kingdom of God. When we find ourselves becoming submissive to what God wants. You know, everything that we do, I stand here, everything that's preached or taught is from the word of God. It's just not my thoughts or my opinions. I have those, but it's based upon the Word of God. And the Word of God calls us to be good stewards of all that we have. 
Stewardship is managing. It's, it's using properly. It's working with and overseeing all that God has. See, God's given you and I opportunity to become faithful. He's given us a decree within our life that, that if we will apply it to our lives, that, that we can find that through His faithfulness, we become even more faithful. In Exodus 19 and 5, it's not going to come on the screens in front of you. But the Word of God says, For all the earth belongs to God. All the earth. Haggai 2 and 8, and that's one that you may not even know is in the Bible. It says, Silver and gold is mine. That's God speaking. He says, Silver and gold is mine. Psalms 50 and 10 says, Every beast in the forest is mine. James 1 and 17, Every good gift that we have received comes from the Father of lights. You can go through Scripture, and that's just a small amount of Scripture that declares that God owns it all. And he's put it in our possession that we may find the fruit of our labor to bless us. But when we find that we are struggling through life, many times it's because we're dealing with cursed money because we've never given it to God. We find ourselves struggling when we never give our talent to God, when we never give our time to God. When we find that through who he is, that, that he is faithful. The challenge for us today is that we would be found faithful. There are some that may say, well, I've worked for this money. You have. But it's through the grace of God and his mercy that you have strength, that you have breath. Stop alongside of someone that suffers through a COPD that can't hardly get a breath in and uh, can't hardly get a breath out. And there will be some of them says, if I could just breathe again, I could work again. Or the individual that says that his back is more popular than he is because his back is always going out. <laughs> <laughs> For those that didn't think that was funny, write a complaint and um, make sure that one of the ushers get it and they'll, they'll show you how to laugh a little bit maybe. I don't know. You and I, we have to have an understanding that as a church, we must be givers. As individuals, as believers, we much, must be givers. And if you haven't been here for a while, you missed a lot of good messages and you came back on another Sunday where the pastor is preaching about finance. Well, praise God that you are here. And I'll smile at you out in the foyer later. See, when we look at the text that I want to present to you, it's going to come on the screen. It says Mark chapter 12. And this is what Jesus is doing. Verse 41 now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. Next verse. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which is about equivalent to a 32nd of a penny in today's economy. Which makes... A quadrant. Next verse. So he called his disciples to himself and he said to them, Surely I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. If it was so important that Christ sat there 
and he observed what was going on. Is it not important for today? See, when we talk of tithe, tithe is based upon what you make. If you are a millionaire, you make a million dollars a year, your tithe is $100,000. If you make $100,000, your tithe is $10,000. You make a thousand, it's a hundred. If you make a hundred, it's ten. If you only make ten dollars, your tithe is a dollar. See, God has never asked you to give more than what He's asked you to give. But in this passage of Scripture, what I want to bring to you is the fact it's not what we give. Because all of us, as I look around, there are some that, that make a lot of money every week, and there's others that are just barely getting by. But God's Word says if we'll give according to who He is and to who He is in our life, that when we give, He will bless us. That He will bless us. That He will find a way to bring blessings into our life. See, the first pillar of any church, any ministry, it takes the stewardship of not just finance, but of time and of talent. See, I'm a firm believer as I stand here that finance will follow ministry. Not always is the finance come and then ministry begins. Ministry takes place and finances start to come in because it has to be. And if you've never understood, it takes finances. Be able to come together as a church. It takes finances to make sure that we're all not in here in a double layered park of freezing to, because it's the same temperature inside as it is outside. But it also takes finances for ministry to go for books, Bibles, those things that come into our hands that we are very diligently. Diligently, we don't waste a dime here. Matter of fact, you go to ask Billy Joe, and Billy Joe will tell you, I can take two nickels and squeeze them together and come out with about a quarter. Why? And she'll tell you also, we don't throw anything away. We're reusing things that other people would have already tossed, but the facts are stewardship is about being handed to us that we manage. See, when I stand here as your pastor, everything that you give unto the Lord in this house, now you heard those words, that you give unto the Lord in this house, I go through the process of being very frugal. You know why? It's not my money. It's God's money. And when you give it into the house, the storehouse of this place that we call home is finding ourselves being truly giving unto as God demands. Not just come man, he demands. Bring your tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat within it. Not meat for us to set upon and become rancid and spoiled, but meat that we can give away. Ministry that we can give away. Last week we talked with the Resurrection House and the board and, and uh, one individual that does the jail ministry. and uh, I don't know, you can put your hand up, I can call you by name, I'm looking at you. Uh, does a tremendous job. Last week we found out that the jails got locked down again because of, of the pandemic of... of <laughs> Facebook police might walk that I'm not for sure but I know it's real I, I, I know people are being sick but they closed it down again why somebody's concerned but that doesn't stop jail ministry it just stops us from getting into them face to face we still have the ability to touch lives you know what you get to do every single day if you choose to you can pray for everyone in the jails and the prisons around just Fond du Lac. 
you just, I mean, how many do we have? If I ask how many guards we have here, or retired guards, how many hands would go up? Not retarded guards, retired guards. <laughs> okay, don't raise your hand. There you go. But we have two or three that are working, some that are retired. There, there's, a, there's a process in understanding why it's so important for us to become faithful. Faithful in our giving. See, in this passage of Scripture, Jesus is intently watching what's going on. It says he sat across and he watched. And as those individuals that came, they came, they gave their tithes, some gave offering. But the rich ones, and, and in that time, you have to go back and study, they just didn't have a, a joy box in the back with a small slit in the top for you to put your finances in. They didn't have an app online that you can pay your tithe or give your offerings through PayPal or Tidely. They didn't even have someone standing there with a red velvet bag. They had what was called a trumpet. And it was a huge funnel, many times made of gold. And it would be poured in, it would go into a holding area. But those that was giving, that had huge wealth, it wasn't about what they were giving, it was the attitude of what they were giving. And they made a big to-do about it, and they stood over the trumpet, and they would proclaim, and they'd hold up the bag a little higher where everyone would be drawn to them and be amazed at how much went in. But it wasn't about a heart, it was about self-promotion. We read other scriptures where where they literally stand and beat their chest and pray and proclaim how great they are. Why another kneels down and professes and confesses that he's just a sinner. See, this morning, what God has laid upon my heart and and, and if you've never if you've never stood up and, and preached about being faithful in your stewardship in front of a crowd, you don't know how rough this is. Because there's some that are sitting here watching online is all he ever talks about is money, and that's not true. If you want to find out who talks about money more than I do, get in the Word of God and let Jesus start talking to you about it. But I stand here this morning knowing that it's a hard alliance. It's so important for us to understand that Christ told his disciples, come here, I got a question. Who gave the most? Who gave all? Well, when we see it with our physical eye, oh, it was a rich man that stood in there and dumped hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And Christ says, no. It was the little elderly widow. Because she walked up and she gave all she had. That widow, that would have been an equivalent of a day's wage. Ladies, some of you understand you're still not being paid the value of who you are just simply because of your gender. That's a fact, still happens. But she gave everything because she had a heart of trust. She had a heart of an alliance knowing that whatever she gave, God himself would return it. God himself would find a way to bless her in her daily needs. See, if you and I would truly understand, if we would seek after God and his righteousness and hold to the truth of Scripture that says that all that you have need will be added unto you. Now, I'm going to tell you a personal story. How many's ever got mad at the preacher, mad at the church, and you withheld your tithe? Don't put your hand up. I'll put my hand up. I did that once. I was aggravated. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to give. Well, anybody want to guess how that turned out? 
My wife would write a check, and she would put it into the back of the checkbook, deduct it from everything, and she would hold on to it. I was upset. I was immature in the Lord. I was a terrible two toddler. I was throwing a fit because it didn't go the way I wanted to. And don't put your hand up. Anybody ever been found guilty of that one? Well, I'm not going to give. Well, I was on my way to work and I was driving a milk delivery. I delivered to all the Aldi stores in that area. And my route was 615 miles. And I was on my way to work that night because I left at 2 o'clock in the morning. And my pickup truck literally died. I mean, it just gave up the ghost right there on the interstate. <laughs> Don't know. Went to start it, and it would just laugh at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I pop the hood and I'm looking around and, and I don't really know why I do that because I can't work on I can work on old motorcycles, old Harleys but I don't have a clue about some of the especially computerized stuff I hitched hike to go to work and not a single person picked me up why would they? <laughs> six foot Nearly 300 pound guy with his thumb out. It was too cold to roll my pants up. My leg would have stopped him, that's for sure. But <laughs> I walked. That was the end of the story. Does anyone want to guess exactly how much it cost to have my truck fixed? To the penny of what I withheld from God. When I got the bill, I looked at my wife. I said, get that tithe sent. And it proved to me a lesson that I can survive on 90% of blessed money more than I ever could trying to survive on money that was cursed because God didn't bless it. I learned to start giving of my all, my time, my effort. I found that what talents I have for some things, I put them on the shelf to where others could step forward. Not talking about who I am, but talking about the process of giving. I found myself buying instruments and putting it in the hands of young men and young women that they would learn to play the bass guitar, play the acoustic guitar. I still give things away. I don't do it to where anybody knows what's going on. But I do it in such a way that God gets the glory because someone steps in to their role. And all they needed was someone to share, someone to give. See, the wealthy, many times, are looking for self-promotions social prejudice because it was really wasn't about what was going on other than the fact that they were just tipping God. They wasn't bringing it to the storehouse to be a blessing. They were bringing it to the storehouse that they would be shown off. Have you ever wondered why we have the little red velvet bags where no one sees what you're putting in as you place it within the bag? I can tell you there's only one individual that knows who gives, and that's Billy Joe because she makes the deposit. I don't look at the deposits. I don't go through the process of trying to figure out who gives and who doesn't. I trust God, and we bless the deposit. I pray over the deposit every single week, just like we do when we receive it, that God would multiply it. See, souls are in peril. And we have to give and we have to become a blessing. We have to find ourselves to be like this widow. That we would give out of self-denying. A heart of sacrifice. A heart of surrender. When they were singing this song this morning, I surrender all. 
Not the old hymn that we used to sing, but the song that they sung in last. They didn't know what I was preaching on. Well, they knew what I was preaching on, but they didn't know the emphasis that I was going to make. See, when we give our all, we give it unto God. Stewardship is about all of who we are. When we look at what God's Word is saying and putting within our heart, we can look at such places as Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And it says, it comes on the screen, And you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And Jesus says, this is the first commandment. Our all. What do we give our all? See, many times it is about a deeper issue. As I gave you understanding, it's about a heart issue. I had a bad heart. I had an attitude that I was going to keep the ministry from going forth. As I stand here, I should have been put on a post and horse whip. Because all it did was prove that God was going to get his from me, not just once, but twice. So my challenge to you this morning is that we find ourselves wanting to become committed. That we become a church in Matthew 6 and 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where our treasure is, what we're devoted to, finding ourselves being faithful and, and devoting all of our, what we have and our time and our talent, our, our, our tithe, re, regardless of the amount, we just give because of who God is. A church that becomes powerful. A church that becomes different. And what God's calling us to do. And church, my challenges to you over the next several weeks will be based upon what the Word of God says. That we can become, as believers, we can become a pillar of ministry. And as a church, we can become a greater pillar in ministry. Addiction, not just addiction of, of drugs and alcohol, that's detrimental. But there's a lot of addiction that we deal with. This coming Thursday night, our 12-step program will start back up. There's 30 different addictions listed. It's co-ed. I encourage you, if you're struggling in anything to come, starts at 6.30. Here in the future, our women's 12-step program will eventually restart just for women alone. Dealing with addictions. I encourage you, to answer these questions. Not going to call anybody to the front. These questions are for you to be challenged that you take them with you. These questions stay not just heavy on your heart, but stirring on your heart. Let it stir your heart this morning. How does faithfulness apply to your life? Are you able to stand and say, I am faithful? Our next question is, what have I? The individual between my elbow. See, it's real easy for us to throw things around to someone else's pew. We can be watching online and say, no, that applies to someone else. But the question is, what have I been holding back from God? 
What have I found in my life that I won't give away? Is it your time? Your talent? Is it your finances, your tithe, your offerings? See, we can all come into the house of God and we can receive from God and, and, and all that He has for us. question, are you willing to surrender at all? Are you willing to surrender at all? See, God's blessed us and says, if you'll give the 10%, I'll let you live on 90%. And if I would walk men and women across this stage and says, I am faithful to give they would tell you of the glory of God shining down on their life in so many ways. Matter of fact, in some ways, you just can't even understand where it comes from. So I'm going to ask you to stand. There is still a list out in the foyer at the information table of how you can be praying. I encourage you to stop by and get one. I also ask that you continue to pray. We're believing. Last night we had a powerful move of God here. The first and the third Saturdays of every month we join together. We have worship and the word. And last night we were praying and, and truly declaring a healing over our bodies. And before I ever got out of the building... My left knee has even went down because it was prayed that swelling would be removed. God's faithful. God's faithful in all that He promised. There is no question, there is no doubt in who He is and what He provides. So let us be found faithful. Amen. Heavenly Father, this morning, Lord, I've done what You've called me to do, Lord. Now I ask that You bless. God, as these questions are stirred within our hearts and our minds. Lord, what are we holding back from you? God, only we can, can answer that for ourselves individually, Lord, but I ask that your Holy Spirit would continue to stir the question. God, what time and talent are we holding back? What tithe and offering are we holding back? Lord, of who we are, what are we holding back from you, Lord? So stir that, Holy Spirit, stir that in lives today. And God, let us commit to be found faithful in surrendering all that we are to you. Oh God, touch those. We've claimed it and proclaimed it that those that are suffering through sickness is healed by the stripes that you bore. So Lord, we claim that this morning. God, we claim that truly your grace and your mercy follows us. So God, let us show grace and mercy to the world that we live in. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of this beautiful Sunday that God's given us.